I'd like to welcome Chris Wood to join us. Um, and Chris is a light artist. So before we speak to Chris, let's see what some examples of her work. Wow, that's fantastic, Chris. That was beautiful. Um, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so you're a light artist or an artist to work in light. Tell us, a, if you would, a couple of things. What did we just see? What, what was that? What were those examples? Well, you, that was a selection of, um, of my works, of the different kinds of work that I do. So I produce work for um, corporate clients, um, private clients, the healthcare, I work indoors and outdoors and I work internationally. Um, and what I do as a light artist is I exploit the opportunities that the light presents in a space. So I work with uh, different arrangements of materials that engage with light in in interesting ways um, and create patterns with the light that presents itself in the space. I use, I work with artificial light and natural light um, and both present very different possibilities wow, that's and cool. problems. Chris, can, you, can you tell us, um, do, you, do you make the, is it glass you're working with or perspex? What materials are you working with? I work with all sorts. I do a lot of work with perspex um, and glass. I started off with glass, but basically I use anything that allows me to manipulate light in different ways. A concave mirror, a glass of water, anything. But, but the, th the material that I think I'm probably best known for is diacroic and that's a material I should have a piece with me um, it's a material well you, you, you can see it in the in the video it's a material that has no color at all um, but it interferes with the light that passes through it so lights made up of um, of optical colors and when you interfere with the way that the passage of the light travels you reveal these optical colors so the material itself has no color but it it um it prevents certain wavelengths um from passing through so it reflects those and that's why you get one color reflected and the remaining wavelengths which are the opposite prismatic color pass through wow. and they change depending on the angle of the light and the angle of the viewer so it's the most amazingly eloquent description of the magic of light this material it just says it all fantastic okay so um for our viewers you're a light artist we've seen some great examples of your work um what what do you do i mean is every day the same what do you do every day as an artist in this medium do you, are you making all the time what do you give us an example of the sort of things that you do in an, in an ordinary an average day well, I, I actually don't do any making now at all. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, there's four of us in our team and we all work part time, but we come together on a Tuesday. So that's like a typical day. So we have a big meeting in the morning um, and decide what's what's been done, what needs to be done. And then after the meeting, then we all go on to do our own thing. So Caroline is my production manager. She will be 
making the work. She does most of the making. Lily is my social media person, so she'll be doing social media or marketing or the shop. Kirsten is my PA who does everything. <laughs> so she does all of the organizing, shipping, answering emails, all of that sort of stuff. And I do the designing. So I do a lot of work on the computer. I use a, a program called SketchUp, which allows me, I mean, I used to take, you know, understanding the space that I'm working in is really important. And so I used to make physical models so that I could understand the light, but now I can do this in on my computer program. So I, I can put a building in a, in its geographic location and get an understanding of where the light would be at a certain time of the year at a certain time of the day and that is you know the, the the technology has enabled me to move on move my work on so much my pattern making as well you know i used to spend hours making patterns you know just with a pencil and compass and ruler and things. And now I can do that so quickly on SketchUp. It's, it's great, it's amazing. So you, you, you haven't suddenly arrived as this light artist. Um, I know, because we've had a conversation before, I know you've had an interesting career to date. So give us a couple of examples. So Chris Wood wasn't always a light artist. What else have you done in your career, Chris? Well, I was a hairdresser for 15 years. <laughs> um, but I always wanted to be an artist. It was, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm dyslexic. And um, at school, I wasn't a high achiever. But the only thing I was good at was art and making things. And my mum was a big inspiration for me. I remember when she made um, me some wings when I was an angel in the nativity play. And those wings, I can smell the, the, the glue that she used to, to paste every feather onto these beautiful wings. And it was just the most wonderful thing. And I, I really think that was what ignited a spark in me. I wanted to make wings like that. I wanted to sew like my mum could sew. And I mean, I was always a drawer. I loved, I, and it was the only thing I ever wanted to do. It was the only thing I ever felt good at. I had, um, you know, it, being dyslexic's really hard. You know, it, I think it's different now. But even when my daughter was at school, it was hard mm. for her. You know, it wasn't a recognised thing. And, um, yeah, a lot of artists are dyslexic. I think, you know, you, you just have an aptitude for visual yes. vocabulary rather than, you know, written, the written word. So, and I, I mean, I, I love books and things. I listen to books, but I'm a slow reader. And that held me back and it held, you know, it really big time affected my confidence. And I also had a big sister who was a very high flyer. And, you know, I always thought I was rubbish. I really did. I thought there was, you know, I went to a secondary school that had no aspirations for you. So I just ended up drifting into hairdressing. And that was okay. It was, well, it was interesting right. from what you said. If you imagine that, that I think many young people don't know exactly what they want to do when they leave school or college. Mm. Um, mm. What I'm interested in especially is that, uh, presumably, I think you'd have been probably a great hairdresser. It's a creative thing to do. You're, you're oh, yeah. working creatively. And yet, um, if you did that for a number of years, then you were what we call a mature student to yeah. actually then. Because uh, So when you, you, what was your training route to, to actually into your current line of work? Did you, did you do, what, did you do a degree as a mature student or a foundation? What happened? I, I, I went to, um, I became a home hairdresser. So I used to do hairdressing at home and it, it's, it's, you know, it's quite a long story. I, I was married before and then I, um, I split up with that man and, married a man that I met when he was at art college 
and moved down to London and I had some money which I invested in a pottery studio because I thought I'll be a potter, I'll do, I'll do pottery. Um, and so we, we got this pottery studio set up and I worked towards getting a portfolio. And because Mac, my husband, was a, an art teacher, he helped me so much um, with my application. And there was a part-time course in 3D design at Middlesex Polytechnic. So I, I applied for that and got in. And that totally terrified me, absolutely terrified me. Um, but anyway, I went part-time and that was very much like a foundation course. The first year um, you had different areas. So you had um, metalwork, ceramics and furniture design. And so I could choose a term in each, which I did. Well, no, I can't remember. Anyway, I went part time and then um, for a year and then I decided I'd had enough of hairdressing. And, you know, my husband was able to support me and help me. And, and in those days, you got mature student grants. So I went full time. So I started. So I'd, I'd kind of had my foundation in my first year part-time and then I went full-time and I started the first year again and then in that year I decided I was going to choose the hardest subject first and get that out of the way so furniture design was the hardest one because you had really really tough tough tutors that gave you a real grilling if you didn't get it right so I decided I'd do that and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the design process. But my first project was to design a light fitting. And that was just, you know, it's where it all started in that light fitting. Because the tutor said, you've just got to look at light and look at what light does. And that just was, that was it. I can work with light as a material. And I've never looked back and I'm completely obsessed. That's fantastic. So I, yeah, so that was it. I went and I, I, so I then specialised in furniture design. And furniture design was so good because it was, you know, you, you had to work out how things joined together and um, how things work and, you know, and resolve so much. And, and it's, it's such a challenge to bring together um lots of physical requirements with your own visual eye you know with your own visual aesthetic on on top of it it's it's a it's very very rewarding this is great so chris i'm, I'm asking all of our guests the same question really and can you tell us what are the best things about what you do either the work you do or or your career what are the best things I think people want to know I mean it, it sounds like you do some amazing work you've done some great commissions you obviously love what you do which is brilliant what are the best things about about your job would you say well it's not the best thing but it's really really important because I worked for 15 years as a hairdresser and all that time I lost my liberty, my freedom to do what I wanted to do. And it really is so important to me to be my own boss, to, to decide for myself what I do and when I do it. I, I love that. And, and if I hadn't done that 15 years of hairdressing, I wouldn't have had had that perspective on the value of time and how important it is to um to fill that time with things that you enjoy doing I mean, it, you know it's if if you're lucky enough to do that that's so fabulous it's so i i still pinch myself today you know thinking now how the hell have i got here it's amazing no career is perfect, no job's perfect. So no. I just need to ask you, what are the sort of more challenging things or the less good things about, about what you do, Chris? So the best thing is being a boss, is, is, is being my own boss. And the worst thing is being a boss. <laughs> I hate being a boss. Um, it's hard. It's hard because you have to manage people. You have to... No, I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, yeah. 
If you were to think about the, the young people who, who may be watching this, this video, um, what personal qualities? So I suppose what I'm saying is that a level of talent's important, a level of hard work's important in being successful. Are there personal qualities you think young people need if they want to follow a career in, in art and design? What do you think? Well, I, I, think, I think the most important thing is passion. I, I really do. Because if you've got the passion, the hard work and the determination go hand in hand with the passion. You know, you have to be determined. You have to be prepared to take the knocks. And actually, I think something that I decided, and it was a very conscious thing, that because I was applying for lots of things and getting loads of rejections. And, you know, I... I, I started thinking oh this is awful this is awful um but actually i consciously thought i can turn this round i can make all of my rejections something positive because you learn from it you learn from everything that you do and you know you can you can take it and um and grow from it and and look at at what what didn't go right and learn from it so it's about just learning and and embracing the problems because there very is good problems comments, very good points though um chris thank you so much for sharing time with us today i'm hoping that we'll we'll talk to you again um in a panel discussion later but for the moment um if you have a question for chris remember just use the link at the bottom of the screen and you can um email a question across and we'll try and get answers but thank you, Chris, very much for sharing time today and for joining us on Creating the Future Live. Thank you. Pleasure.